What's up about penguins? Today we do 2019 number six. This one's on experimental design and gene expression. So we have this yeast, this single-celled organism. We're looking at amino acid synthesis in our yeast cells occurs through a metabolic pathway, and the enzymes in those pathways are encoded by different genes. The synthesis of a particular amino acid can be prevented by the mutation of a gene encoding an enzyme in the required pathway. A researcher conducting experiments to determine the ability of a yeast to grow on the media that differs in the amino acid content. Yeast can grow as both a haploid and diploid cells. Researcher tested two different haploid yeast cells, mutant 1 and 2, each of which has a single recessive mutation and a haploid wild type strain. The resulting data is shown in our table. So you see here that with treatment 1 that has all the amino acid presence, all of the uh, yeast was able to grow. In treatment 2, when there was no amino acid presence, only wild type was able to grow. In treatment three, it had all the amino acids except for methionine. Um, and so wild type and mutant two could grow, but mutant one could not grow. This tells me that mutant one is unable to synthesize methionine. And so since it can't uh, synthesize methionine, it's not able to survive. Um, and then in treatment four, all the amino acids except leucine are going to be found, which means that, um, and we see wild type and mutant one could survive, which means that mutant two is unable to make the leucine. So identify the role of treatment one in the experiment. So if I look at treatment one, I see that this one has all the amino acids present. Um, I'm testing one that has no mutations. I have one that is unable to make a single uh, amino acid, and then I have another mutant that can't make a single amino acid. Since all the amino acids are present in there, um, I'm ensuring that the uh, yeast is viable, that it can survive, okay? Um, and it has nothing to do with mutations or something that caused them not to survive in later ones. So this would be considered a control, a specifically a positive control um, because all the treatment groups are there. So it's positive control. This tests the viability of the yeast. So um, this ensures that they were all healthy to begin with. And then treatment one allows researchers to be confident that any change I see in the experimental outcome is due to a difference in the treatment. So the student says treatment one is a control. It ensures that all of the yeast can reproduce in a normal setting. So B says provide reasoning to explain how mean one can grow on treatment one, but cannot grow on treatment three. So if we look here at treatment one and treatment three, I see that the treatment one has all the amino acids present and the mutant one is there. And then treatment three is missing methionine um, and the mutant did not survive. And so this means that if the methionine is present, the mutant is able to use it. Um, but it's not able to synthesize its own methionine, and so it's not able to survive. Um, so mutant one can use methionine when it's present, but mutant one, mutant one cannot synthesize methionine. So a student says mutant one has a single recessive mutation, given in the prompt, that prevents it from synthesizing methionine. It survives in treatment one because all the amino acids are present, but it cannot survive in treatment three because methionine is not present. So this last one gives kids a little bit of trouble. So we're going to go through this one slowly. Um, the yeast mate by forming the two different haploid cells to make the diploid cells. In a second experiment, the researcher mates mutant 1 and mutant 2. And using the table, let's predict whether those diploid cells will grow on the different media. Use a plus sign to show growth and a negative sign to indicate no growth. Okay. So if I put mutant 1 and mutant 2 together and they both survived in treatment 1, I would, of course, expect them to both survive in um, in the diploid cell <clears throat> on treatment one. Okay, so then if I look at treatment three, okay, so in treatment three, I've got the, uh, I was able to grow here, but I wasn't able to grow there. Um, so because of the fact that this one can't make methionine, but mutant two is able to, I would expect that to grow there. And then the reverse is occurring here in treatment four, okay? Mutant one is able to make leucine, but mutant two is unable to. So mutant one is gonna make the leucine that's needed for mutant two to survive. So it'll have that gene, um, not really make it for it, but it has that gene in its genetic information. And that same policy happens with treatment two. And this is where the students usually screw up, okay? Is they see that negative and they immediately wanna put a negative in this last column. But what mutant one's genetic material lacked, mutant two has. And what mutant two's genetic material lacked from mutant one, they're now able to kind of together complement so they all grow. And so we would find there to be um, full growth in all of our cells. So the student, of course, drew all the plus signs because this one they just had to fill in the little chart. And so they have their full credit. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, 8 by Pain was just success by all.